please stand if you are able. Take someone's hand if you feel comfortable doing so. And come into the awareness of spirit. As we join in singing, surely the presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Just invite you to feel the hand in your hand as our symbol and our understanding of oneness, our connectiveness to all, to one another. And as we're holding each other's hand, let us consciously let go of any sense of lack or limitation or any sense of littleness or separateness, just knowing that there's only one. Let's connect with that inner knowing, the oneness. And let's carry that through the week. There's only one. So when thoughts or ideas of comparing, judgment, we can let those go and just offer a blessing. I bless you. I bless you knowing you are the divine. I see your divine, knowing that you and I are one. Let's carry that through the week and through our lives, knowing that we are one. We are the love. We are the peace. And so it is. Amen.
she's here today and she's backing us up. Leslie Smith is with us today. Yes, And you will hear from her very soon. Beautiful, thank you. Unity on the River is a center of celebration, transformation, inspiration, spirit-centeredness, and oneness, and joy. Please join me in saying our mission and vision statements. Our mission statement, we are a vibrant spiritual community that celebrates the presence in all and awakens humanity to its divinity. And our vision, centered in love, we joyously co-create a world of oneness, peace, and harmony. Good morning. I am Tom Paolini, and I will be facilitating today for our guest speaker, the Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck. I will further introduce him more formally later in the service. As most of you know, we have live streaming here at Unity on the River every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'd like to thank our streamers for joining us, so let's bring them into the sanctuary by turning around and waving and just... We'd also like to welcome anyone celebrating with us for the first time. If you'd raise your hand, we have a flower for you. We bless you. And thank you for coming. So someone from our welcome team will approach you later and tell you all about us. They'll show you our welcome table and give you a CD. And um, hopefully we'll see more of you. So thank you for being with us. We welcome all paths to God and know that your presence enhances our experience. So. Please join us in fellowship after the service. Our intention of the day, this year we are on a journey to connect with our inner guide, enhance our personal experience with our inner Christ. We are also finding ourselves in transition, and we are using life's changes to enhance our relationship, our, I'm sorry, we're, we're using life's changes to in, help us with our spiritual awakening. So now I'd like to, uh, Bring up Carol Walrzak for some celebrations and invitations. I stand in the presence. One announcement right now, more later. I'm so excited. This is our Adventures in Faith book. It's called I Am, The Power of Discovering Who We Really Are. And the author is Howard Falco. At 35, he was, I believe, an investment banker, married with a couple of kids, and he had a major transformation. And as a result of this, he wrote this book. So what is Adventures in Faith? It's an opportunity for all of you to join a book group to read the same book. And today, we have a table in hospitality. And on it are forms. If you would like to open up your home or perhaps facilitate for someone else. And we'll have that running for a couple of weeks. And then everybody will have a chance to sign up for a book group. Also, I would love to see one or two here. So if someone wanted to do a Wednesday evening here, facilitate the group. There's a study guide. Lots of help for you. The exciting thing is Jackie Woodside is kicking this off. It's uh, Sunday, October 12th, and it's late this year, 
because we have so many ministerial candidates coming in in September, we thought we would postpone it till October 12th. And um, Howard Falco will be here the third week and he will speak to his book. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. It is that time in our service where we greet each other and say namaste. So take a moment with a handshake or a hug. Look at each other in the eyes. I see the divine in you. favorite part of the service. We love to behold the Christ in each other, don't we? And now, Maura and the band with Leslie, are you going to open our hearts up a little bit? Oops. So. There we go. I have to just tell you, you're all so beautiful. I'm overwhelmed looking at you. It's like, wow. It's just wonderful to be here. Just incredibly wonderful. Thank you.
Smith. And I concur, you are a radiant light of God. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, the Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck. Paul currently serves as Unity Institute as Spiritual Education and Enrichment, that's the SEE, on the faculty, and was formerly the Dean of SEE. He also served as Minister of Pastoral Care and Prayer at Unity Church of Overland Park in Kansas as a retreat minister for Unity prior to his current position. He is the author of Point of Power, Heart-Centered Metaphysics. He co-authored Applying Heart-Centered Metaphysics and Power Up, a 12 powers text and card set with Reverend Dr. Cher Holton. Paul also co-authored Get Over It and Get Over These with the Reverend Dr. Bill Horton. For seven years, Paul hosted Metaphysical Romp, a weekly internet radio show on Unity FM, and he now co-hosts Metaphysical Romp 2 with, Dr. with Reverend Drs. Bill and Cher Holton. It's all about metaphysical theory, supportive science, and practical application. Paul lives in Overland Park, Kansas, with two Yorkshire Terriers, Maxie, Mackie and Monet. So please join me in welcoming the Reverend Dr. Paul Hasselbeck. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. It's a beautiful day in my consciousness. How about yours? So let's say that together. It's a beautiful day in my consciousness. Wow. Gosh. And I hear it. You know, I hear it. I feel it right here. I'm so grateful to be here. And I'm so grateful to be on a platform where the music is so, so good. Yeah, see? Look, here's how it works. If the music is good and I fall on my face, you remember the music. You'll just say, Paul who? <laughs> so I'm here today to have a little bit of, of a metaphysical romp. And if you don't know what we mean by metaphysical or metaphysics, it's really just a fancy term we use for unity theology or unity belief system. And today's talk is pretty much a third principle talk. We create our life experiences with our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Because these five basic principles are gateways to other teachings and other truths that have such depth. And often we do not get beyond these five. And so unity comes across as cotton candy. Because we think that's all it is, right? And it's not this stuff either. Wait, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. I did not know I was in the land of fluff until this morning. Maybe one of the best achievements of the state of Massachusetts, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> right? Wow, right. So, so unity is not cotton candy. It's not fluff. We can, we can approach it that way. We can approach it in a surface way. And, and at that level, it's good because it feels good. And so when we think about fluff, we have these sayings. I just chose through, uh, three, fake it till you make it, it is what it is, and count it all good, call it all good. Now, you've heard these, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and has anybody ever said those? Okay, you know, you know, you say your house is on fire and someone say, well, it's all in divine order. You know, and you're on to talking about your kids or something. <laughs> so we have these statements that come across as fluff. 
But what about the dark side? What about our shadow work, right? What, what, what about that? I mean, look, this, I'm going to be really self-revealing here. I have an ugly twin. I, I, I have an ugly twin, and I knew this before I became a dentist. I mean, before I became a minister. I would show... <laughs> My mother knew I had it before I became a dentist. <laughs> but, but there's this dark side, okay? I, I have this ugly twin. We sometimes call it getting up on the wrong side of the bed. You're laughing, so I, I think you all probably have something like that yourselves, okay? So, <laughs> ugly twin, okay? Now, <laughs> when, my, when my ugly twin shows up, I do something like this. Isn't everything just great? Yeah. <laughs> it's all good, it's all God. <laughs> so I had, this, I had this arrangement with my... Um, with, with my dental assistants, and I put it over to uh, my executive assistant that I had at Unity Village, and the deal was, if I show up in the morning and you think it's my ugly twin, your job is to tell me. <laughs> so, uh, Paul? So th this is, I, I really instructed her. I said, so your job is to come in and say, Paul, I think your ugly twin's here. Please go to the Peace Chapel and pray. <laughs> And really, simply admitting we have an ugly twin helps us deal with it. It's when I keep trying to hide it that, boy, does it come out in weird ways. It was like, oh, no, I'm not ugly. Oh, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not, oh. okay? So let, let's look at some basic metaphysics, all right, so we can understand this and then launch from there. Are you, are you in for that? Okay, so... So at the core of our beingness, the truth of what we are is this thing in unity we call Christ, the I am. I, like it, I really like to call it our infinite potential. Within each of us is this grandeur that has infinite potential. And whether we like it or not, you're the one who's choosing how you use that infinite potential to show up. I'll say that again. You and I are using that infinite potential to show up. And so we have in our consciousness something I could call, I, it's what I think I am and what I'm afraid I am, okay? What I'm afraid I am is that ugly twin, or what Charles Fillmore would call the adverse ego. The adverse ego, that ugly twin, is what I use to lead myself away from my divinity. And because I'm aware I have this ugly twin, I create another level. I call, it's the pretend I am. <laughs> oh, you, guys, you guys are acquainted with this, aren't you? You know, it's the pretend self. You know, and, and to a certain extent, it's useful. I have a self that's a minister. I have a self that's a friend. I have a self that's a partner. And it, it's, it's very useful and it, it's very healthy. And there's that self that shows up to hide who I'm afraid I am because... If I show you that side, I'm afraid you're not going to love me and you're going to go away. Amen. You feel that? You know that? Yeah. So, so I, have this, I have this stuff in me that I'm trying to hide from you. And like I said, then it comes out in wonky ways. Not useful. And then you do go away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's another layer that I call spiritual icing. So what's spiritual icing? Spiritual icing is when maybe you show up to a uni church for the first time, and you meet somebody like Amy or somebody like Rhonda, and you see them authentically showing up in service in this beautiful way, radiating love, and then, so say it's me, I meet them, and I, oh, I want that for myself. So I put it on like a jacket, okay? It's, it's like cleaning, out, cleaning the outside of the garbage can without emptying it. Okay? 
right? So I put on this jacket, and then you cross me. And then what do you think happens? Ugly twin to the front. <laughs> right? And so all of this stuff, the spiritualizing, the pretend I am, the think I am, the afraid I am, is what unity calls the personality or the ego. And in unity, we're not trying to kill the ego, okay? We're not trying to kill off the ego. We're trying to transform the adverse ego. We're trying to transform that dark side to be more supportive into what I call the supportive ego. I couldn't stand up here if I didn't have a supportive ego. If I had no ego, you know, I'd be like a boneless chicken. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so the truth of what I am, the truth of what you are, is this thing we call individu individuality. That's your divine nature. And I'm going to disagree with the author of the book. My divine nature is not a who. My divine nature is a what. Because the divine is not a person, not a being, not an entity. It's principle. It's what you are. A unity writer, Imelda Shanklin, wrote a wonderful book called What Are You? I recommend it to anybody. It's the first unity book I ever read before I would even knew what unity was. I don't refer to that Christ nature, that infinite, infinite potential, as a who. My personality is who. My what is the truth of what I am. And so let's look at Myrtle. You know, we're always talking about Charles from Fillmore, aren't we? Let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break from Charles. Chuck, go to the back of the bus, and we're going to talk about Myrtle. Okay? Myrtle was great. And let me just clear up something. People say, Myrtle was the mystic, you know, in her heart. And Charles Fillmore was a mystic, but he was in his head. They both had hearts and heads. <laughs> and the cool thing is they were balanced, okay? And if anybody was the intellect, it was Myrtle, because she could write. She could write. So in How to Let God Help You, Myrtle said... She had this trouble. The trouble did not respond to ordinary faith and prayer. Now, when you read, do you notice stuff like that? What in the world? What is ordinary faith and prayer? Right? Myrtle's saying, it didn't respond. So what is it? So she says, I finally asked the Lord just what it was that I did not get what, what, that I, why it was <laughs> that I did not get well. Would someone like to read for me? <laughs> Okay, so, so first of all, if you read that book and you're a novice, you're going to think she's talking to an outside God that's a being or an entity. If you didn't know that Myrtle said God is principle, and, the, and, the, and it's not a male, it's not a female. In fact, you know, she must have been a pistol because she says, God is not a being with parts like a man. Wait, wait. <laughs> That's what she said. It's in writing. Okay? So do any of you, do, I mean, do any of you talk to yourself? You know, you're, you know, when you talk to yourself, your ego to ego, your personality, you don't believe there's two people there. If you did, you need to get an appointment with a psychiatrist, okay? But we all talk to ourselves, right? Myrtle believed that this divinity, this infinite potential, this principle was and is the truth of what she was, and she had conversations with it. She didn't believe it was separate. She said there's only one mind, and I have my mind in that mind. Do you mind? <laughs> okay? So she said, so she's explaining to her, her higher essence I explained that I had gone all through my consciousness to see what it was that held me. Do you see that's work? Do you see how that's not surface? So she's, she's noticing something. She's sick, and she's saying she's trying to figure out if there's anything in her consciousness that's contributing to it, okay? And she had tried to find the fault. 
Okay, now when we're trying to find the fault, we don't want to get into metaphysical guilt and feel bad about ourselves. And when somebody else is having troubles, we don't want to say, well, what were you holding in consciousness? Okay? <laughs> don't go there. It's a good question to ask yourself when you're doing your work, what, is there anything in my consciousness that you don't ask anybody else? And you know, a weird thing, as I notice, with, with people who do ask that question when people are sick, or having problem, I notice they never ask that question when somebody's life is going well. And that's the best time to ask. You know, if you're going to ask that question, gosh, Amy, you're creating such abundance in your life. What are you holding in consciousness to do that? It's a great question to ask. So, her higher self, or we're going to call it, and herself are having this conversation, and she, she hears her inner knower. Notice that I'm not saying it's separate. Her inner knower says, you have looked among your thoughts, your faults, now look among your virtues. Wow. Wow. I wonder if she kind of just shook her head and went, wow, what just hit me? You know? Okay. Now watch this, because you're going to see something familiar. <laughs> I had tried to keep my feelings to myself, taking great pride in the fact that I never let anyone know just how I felt when anything displeased me and hurt me. Isn't that the unity way? You know, we do unity nice. <laughs> unity nice, you know. Wow. I found that I did not feel as sweet and poised on the inside as I, as I seemed outwardly. And I would say, as she decided to show up outwardly, right? That's a decision. She was hiding what was going on. Just like I did with my ugly twin. <laughs> so she's demonstrating here self-awareness that leads to self-knowledge without self-condemnation. Because when we add self-condemnation to the process, we have one more thing to, he excuse me, to heal. Self-awareness leading to self-knowledge is so important. Anything you can know about yourself, you can use to help yourself. If you're not aware of your ugly twin, you can't do anything about it. If you're not aware of the thoughts and feelings you've been suppressing for years, the beliefs you've been suppressing for years, you can't do anything about them. Paul's rule, I'm only responsible for that which I'm aware of. And I'm talking about in my consciousness. Okay? Myrtle, I began to watch self-awareness, self-observation and to redeem that state of mind. I de determined to handle all that came to me before I swallowed it and allowed it to irritate, cut, and weaken my nerves and organs. Wow, now that is not for the weak of heart, okay? This spiritual practice that she's sharing here, actually is with someone who wrote into her, is deep and important. It's not fluff, it's not cotton candy, okay? As I gained real poise and the ability to keep my thoughts and feelings truly free, I was healed and restored to strength and normal functioning. I was healed and restored to strength and normal functioning. Now, how do you read that last bit? Because that last bit could be read that God healed her. It could be, but really what she's saying is, I healed myself and restored myself to strength. That's what unity is about. We don't pray asking. We pray claiming what is already true. So what about these? Well, Fake it until you make it is really 
In a unity context, faith it till you make it. You faith it till you make it. It is what it is, is, is the starting point. That's the self-awareness. That's the self-knowledge. But if you just say, haven't you noticed this? People say, well, it is what it is. <laughs> and then nothing happens. It is what it is. You know, woe is me. In unity, it is what it is. And then it is what you name it, what you call it. If you name something good, that's not saying the thing that's happening is good. It's, it's really a statement of saying, I am going to use this for good. Whatever happens, you can use it for good. Duh, could have had a V8. <laughs> right? Whatever happens, you can use it for good. I'm on this stage because I was diagnosed with HIV in 1987. Okay? I was told I'd be dead in two years. I started using it for good. The HIV is still living with me. We now have a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> it's still here. If I called it bad, guess what? I would have used it for bad. I would have killed myself somehow, OK? Count it all good, call it all good, is all about your personal attitude, the consciousness you bring to what's happening in your life. If you have an illness, if, you, if you're demonstrating lack, if you're into a divorce, whatever, it's how you use it that's important. It's those, it's this. We create our life experience with our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Are we going to use these by using the divine that we are, or are we going to use them from our ugly twin? This is work, folks, and it can be fun. When something negative happens in your life, it's like, wow! I wonder what kind of good I can manifest out of this mess, okay? Wow, right? Now, you're here in other circles. I wonder how God's going to bless me with this. And then you wait. And then you wait. And then you wait. And then something good happens. You go, oh, that was God. And if you really looked at it, it was you using it for good. When someone says the cancer blessed me, I say to them, no, it didn't. You use the event of cancer to manifest good, to manifest a blessing. See, you are creators. You are powerful but beyond your imagination. You are so powerful that in the face of the truth of wholeness, we can, you can, I can produce sickness and health. Sickness and illness, sorry. E.V. Ingraham said that in the 20s. He said, in the face of the truth of prosperity, you and I can and do produce lack. That's how powerful we are. And as we change, as we start to bring those negative thoughts and feelings to our awareness and work with them, something called chemicalization happens. That is a ruckus occurs in your consciousness. New Age says when the ruckus occurs in your consciousness, you reach or you hit Resistance in your consciousness, you're doing something wrong. New age says that. New thought says, when you start to change and you get the ruckus, hooray! Because it's evidence the truth is working. It's evidence you're working the truth. And your job and my job is to keep moving, not to go, okay, God didn't mean it to happen. It shouldn't happen this way, you know. Okay? And we use affirmation and denial. And folks, these are not surface practices. Denial is based on the power of elimination. One of the 12 infinite potential ideas. And we use elimination to eliminate those thoughts and feelings that no longer work for us. 
We give them no more power. And we use affirmation to claim the truth we want. That's what Myrtle did. That's what she recommended at the turn of the last century. Don't you know ye are gods? Don't you know you're the light of the world? Don't you know you're the infinite potential? And you're deciding moment to moment how you're using that infinite potential. The weird thing is, if my ugly twin shows up, I'm using my divinity to do that. Right? So as you go away today, know that you are this undescribable, describable infinite potential. And you can use it. You are using it, whether you know it or not. And you can use it to have a better experience in your life. Experience is eternal. And even if the outer events don't change, your inner experience is what's important. Your consciousness is what's important. So go forth today knowing you are infinite potential and use it. I'll say it this way. Go forth and be the best Christ you can be. Thank you for being here. And relax. We say let go and let God. What that really means is leash ego, unleash godness. So as you center your awareness and consciousness in that still pool of infinitude, feel the truth of what you are. This infinite potential. 
that simply is. It's not of time, it's not of space, it's not of matter. It is unchanged, unchanging, and unchangeable. Feel after the truth of that infinite potential, that Christ nature, your higher self. And let us invest just a couple minutes being silent and feeling the truth of what we are. Feel the presence. And as we feel that presence, we know it's the truth of what we are, and that presence is love. That presence is wisdom. That presence is understanding. That presence is life. And since God or infinite potential is love, is wisdom, is understanding, is life, you are too. So claim it for yourself. Say to yourself, I am love. I am wisdom. I am understanding. I am life. And our hearts and minds are one as we call forth love, wisdom, understanding, life. Right here and right now, we see that love, wisdom, understanding, and life expressing through every level of our beingness through every level of consciousness, pushing aside anything unlike it with ease and grace. The light shining away the darkness. And now in our outside voice, repeat after me. I am love. I am am wisdom. I am understanding. I am am life. life. And feel the truth of that. Feel the truth of that. And that, my friends, is the absolute truth. And we make it ever more real and ever more apparent right here and now through the power of our words followed by our deeds. Let's say them again. I am love. I am wisdom. I am understanding. 
I am life. I am life. And, so much more. and so much more. And so it is. So you are. So, you are. so, I, am. so I am. Amen. Now I invite you in this awakened and more aware state of consciousness to say the names of those that are on your heart. And we know that for every need, there is the perfect idea. The idea called forth to satisfy that need. I invite you all to join me in consciousness with those who have placed these prayers in the box. Because those prayers were the first claiming of truth. And now we join with them in consciousness, claiming truth, claiming wholeness, health, life, prosperity, abundance. Whatever the need, God is the source. God is resource. God is the infinite potential that meets every seeming need. And when we call forth those ideas, we use them with ease and grace. And we see that happening for each of these individuals right here and right now. And so it is. Amen. In a moment, we will be receiving our tithes and offerings. But first, I'd like to take a moment to recognize our chaplains. Chaplains are available after service for prayer. If the chaplains would please stand or raise your hand as you are able. I know that whatever you have in your heart, you can bring to these chaplains and these blessed souls will hold that truth for you and know that whatever you bring to the chaplains 
not only a blessing to you, is a blessing to them. So let's take our offerings in our hands. And holding them, we'd like to invite the streamers in. There's a donate button on the website. If you wish to give an offering, we appreciate your gifts. So join me in saying the blessing of the tithes and offerings. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. We are so grateful for these gifts, knowing they come to us from love, with love, and as love, and know that these gifts are going out to do the work of love as we help to bring the awareness of the Christ as we help to awaken humanity to its divinity. We are so grateful, and so it is. So we're gonna take this moment to th thank the Unity Choir and the Unity Band, our PowerPoint. <laughs> Streaming and sound, our Sunday service coordinator, our welcome team leader, ushers and greeters, hospitality, bookstore, 
youth and family. If we have any board members with us, if they would please stand. Thank you, Mark, John, John. And the board members are available after service to answer any questions or any discussions you'd like to bring up. So if you feel the call to approach one of them after in the fellowship. And now I'd like to bring up Carol Walrzak once again. Exciting. Next Saturday night is the Motown concert. Woohoo! Starts at 7. You can buy tickets at the door. They're $15. I understand we have some featured artists, Maura Lynch being number one. We Thanks, <laughs> Barkus will be back in the house. Yes. Trish Ives, Meg Rain, Brian Dozer. Wonderful. And also, uh, Youth and Family is going to do a bake sale um, after the concert is over. So we're excited about that. And we have a clip for you. This is from a Motown. There's a taste of what you're going to get. Bring friends. Come. It'll be great. Okay, I'm going to ask Seth to come up, our Sacred Service Director, to do the next announcement. I stand in the presence. So we have two more weeks before the Sacred Service Fair, and we're getting down to it. And uh, any team leader who hasn't gotten back to me yet, I know I send a lot of emails, please come see me after service uh, during fellowship. If you can't be there for the fair, we can talk about perhaps finding someone to delegate the hosting of your table, or we could figure something out. Also, I'm looking for some help um, the Saturday before, which would be the 13th in the afternoon, I'm looking for some help to help me set up the tables. So far, the only beefcake I've found is Frank Barron. And he's, he's formidable, but I could use some more help. And then lastly, um, I'm looking for a couple people to volunteer some grills and some grilling know-how. Um, advanced football knowledge is definitely welcome, but it's not mandatory. But we will supply the food. I just, we're looking for grills and we're looking for the ability to cook. And so, yeah, please, if, if you have either of those, or ideally both, please come talk to me after <laughs> service. Thank you, Seth. Okay, I think we're missing some announcements that um, might have come earlier. Um, I know what some of them are, so I can just go for it. I'll go for it. There's a letter in your packet. You notice you have a lot of paperwork in there. It relates to the ministerial search update. There was a community meeting last week, and um, this letter was also an email blast, and it should answer any questions you might have about the search that's coming up. Now, next Sunday, we are having our first candidate come, and there's a flyer in there. Her name is Pat Venema. She is a unity minister. She'll be coming in on a Friday, and this will be the course for all of the candidates who come in. She'll meet with the staff about four on Friday. Then she'll go out to dinner with some members of the board. And then you're all invited on Saturday morning to a workshop. And her workshop is on the sacred presence, I believe. And you don't have to sign up. You just show up. 10 to noontime. It's all in here. Also, just so you know, um, we can announce one more candidate. If you want to Google Pat, we also have Kathleen McKenna, who is coming, and she will be here on the 21st, that weekend. So just, you know, put their names in Google, maybe Unity next to it, and you might want to 
look at some videos of what they've done and come prepared after their talk on Sunday with your questions and you'll have an opportunity to meet and greet. Plus there's going to be wonderful food. So um, we're going to have uh, it catered and we do need a little bit of help. You can see Seth if you want to help out. So that's kind of how it is. And um, we can't announce one of the candidates yet. We will do so shortly uh, because they are in the process of notifying their own church that they are applying. Okay. Did you find them? Okay, there we go. Uh, today's the last day to sign up for Reverend Dr. Anne Marie Houghton's class, and it is called The Gift of Knowing Yourself Through Unity's Spiritual Gifts. It starts this Thursday morning. Is Annie here today? Oh, there she, she's in the back, so if you have any questions, just see her. It is a wonderful class, and you'll discover what your spiritual gifts are. That should be it, except now we're going to ask, before our last announcement, for the children to come in. And they're going to come up here to the front. We are walking at the light of God. Good morning, everyone. We have a small but mighty group today, and we accomplished many tasks today. We made a welcome sign for all the children to come back. We did that, and we made uh, all these decorations on the welcome sign. We had a school book that was to prepare the kids for school. It was called, what was it called? You remember? Remember what it was called, Sophie? There was an old lady who swallowed some books. <laughs> <laughs> so we're preparing the kids to school. A lot, two of them went to school already, and the other haven't been yet. So next week, we'll continue with that. And we learned some new yoga moves from our friend Sophia. It was so fun today. All right, I have one announcement. At the concert next weekend, Youth Ed is putting on the bake sale. So if uh, you're interested in helping us out, making some baked goods, please sign up in hospitality or in Youth Ed for us. Okay, thank you. Now I think we have one more thing. Just one more thing. There's we have one more thing. Before, before our children leave and before we all leave. Sam, come on now. For those of you that haven't met my friend before, this is Mr. Sammy Snail. Look, look, look at all these guys, Leslie. Sammy, I heard that there was, they did something special. They, they thought you had all the qualities to be a minister at Unity on the River. <laughs> awesome! That would be awesome. But what about all the work I have to do in the world? I have to do my TV show. Because everybody here at Unity knows about oneness. And we're all one, but the rest of the world needs to know. <laughs> and I got to do it. But in the meantime, we're going to do something special. We are? Yes, we are. What are we going to do? We're going to do a walk. A walk through peace. Because we want to bring the unity message to this whole area. Yahoo! Yeah, we do! So what does that mean exactly? It means on October 4th. That's right, October 4th at 10 a.m. We're gonna all get together. 
at the wood, wood, wood sun farm. And, and the green's gonna come and sing. And I'm gonna perform. You are? Yeah. And Clyde's gonna play music. And other people are gonna help. Something very important is going to happen as a result. We're going to raise some money and we're going to put your bully prevention show and your show on love in the area schools. What do you say, Sammy, when people help you? Help you get your message out? I say thank you. Because we all have to know about forgiveness and all about love and being kind and what to do when people aren't kind and who can teach that better than me <laughs> That's right. you do such a good job man you do such a good job so you have to go to the website oh that's right you have to sign up on the website and get all your friends Yes, and ask a team, get a team together. The welcome committee, the food, or just your friends and family, you gotta sign up. Because you can make your own website off of the Unity website. So people can sponsor you. It's been made so easy. And we're gonna have fun. Because, because, because we gotta go on a peace walk. Let's go, guys. Let's take a walk. Gonna take walk, a walk. walk. Yeah, walk, walk. with your brother and your sister. Yeah, grab the hand of your brother. Walk, walk. Grab the hand walk, of your walk. sister. Walk, walk. We're gonna take a walk, walk. together. Yes, a peace walk. 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 We're gonna take a walk. Walk. We're gonna take a peace walk. walk. Everybody walk. now. Walk. We're gonna take this walk. unity walk. message and we're gonna bring it out into walk. the world. Thank you, thank you, Sammy. So let's rise and sing our peace song. Uh, there's one more Are there song any time? children who want to sing? Oh, gonna, gonna sing one more time, don't you? Think? I haven't had enough. So we gotta sing one more song, and then we'll do our peace song. There was a time in my life. I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know, no, I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. And I didn't know, I didn't know the love of God was at hand. discouraged just struggling through to make it through another day you got to let it go I say you got to let it go and this is what we got to say yeah. Woo! I really 
right. We needed that. <laughs> now we're already risen, so let's sing our peace song. you to take in today the message, take into your hearts, bring it out to the world, knowing that you are the Christ, you are the love, you are peace, you are joy, you are oneness. And join me in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God protects us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we are richly blessed. Thursday, 7 to 8.30. Thank you so much, Brian.